myself open. I left myself open there. Unbelievable. So um, the winner of this game, the win, the winner of this game, Jesus, wow. Um, they're gonna play the winner of Spikes and Game Breaker. That's crazy. That is talk about just an absolute top tier roundup of players here for Worlds. I mean, we we expected nothing less, I guess, but that's crazy, man. I am I am super excited to see uh, who's gonna end up making it through here undefeated, three and zero into the round four. And I think round four of the winner's bracket is where they're ending for today. Let me confirm that real quick. Yeah, after yeah. round four yep. of the winner's bracket, that's when the tournament will end. Uh, but there is a different end time for the loser's bracket. Um, yeah, loser's bracket is going until round five. All right, I'm going to turn volume up just a tad for chat. Just a ditch. Hopefully you guys don't regret that because I am naturally loud. So it's actually surprising for me to ever get somebody to request to turn the volume up. <laughs> so this is, we'll see how that goes. But you guys wanted it. You guys asked for it. You guys go live did with it. Did you turn me up too? Yes, I did. Am I good? Am no, I, I actually muted you. Do I need you. to be turned up? I muted you. So that be louder? The heads up. <laughs> so Goza, despite a round of nerfs, we have not managed to dodge the Siver Akshan here. Oh, you mean the three Merciless Hunter in hand? Yeah. Yeah, yep, I agree. This deck is uh, still seemingly quite good, especially because we just saw... I can't believe that win. I can't believe that comeback on the side of Alan. I mean, that's crazy. The Absolver, baby. Yeah, Absolver, huge there. Huge. Yeah, it looks like the deck is still functioning as intended. A lot of the nerfs seemingly not impactful enough, and we really haven't seen as much Bandle Tree as I thought we were going to. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we did. I mean, well, we saw it a lot in Asia, right? Um, I'm so curious to see what the actual top cut rounds up to being as a deck. So I, I cannot well, wait to see that. We'll be here for it. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we will, baby. Yeah, we will. It looks like we're using Sandstone Charger to dissuade some of the aggression from Thomas, but we already know that the Sandstone Charger is coming in at our Vagabond. It's kind of like lining up the blocks in our head, saying, how do we want to yep. play this out? If you throw out the Bright Steel Protector onto the Vagabond, that's where the Sandstone Soldier goes instead. Still yep. free to attack with Akshan. It's really not looking like a good position for Shihu, no matter which card he plays. So instead, we're going to go for the Cataclysm <laughs> onto the Akshan, and I like this. I, I definitely don't hate this. There's no blocker that you're going to be able to establish for the Akshan, thanks to the nerf onto the Merciless Hunter's HP, so... You cannot yeah, just work out the auction where we can, can uh, especially since this unit's dying. Cannot overstate how crazy good Cataclysm is in this deck. I I see it so many times, makes such a huge impact to the board state. We're actually going to get the Sharp Sight in combat to protect the auction, but the return Sharp Sight from see who going to go ahead and take care of it. So auction is still going to get killed here. Going to get the strike though, you know that that countdown tick there on the palace, so that'll be good. But more attacks coming through. Again, you know, Merciless Hunter, great. Two health, that's all well and good. Treasure Seeker, uh, unfortunately, although the two attack can kill the Merciless Hunter, can't actually block it, thanks to the Fearsome Tag. And that's probably one of the reasons why we're still going to see Merciless Hunter played quite a lot in most Shurima decks. Still a fantastic card after the, Merth, like, uh, after the nerf, like Boulevard had mentioned, merging my words together there. But a lot of damage coming through if we don't block this Sandstone Charger Boulevard. Yeah, it's, I mean, Sans, Treasure Seeker's just so good, right? That was kind of what put the whole package over the top yep. was when Treasure Seeker came out. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were other things that happened alongside that, but that's sort of when we started to see the great Shurima takeover of Sivir and all those kinds of things. And, uh, yeah, things looking pretty even, actually. Both players have their Warlord's Palaces down. There's triple Merciless Hunter in the hand of Shihu. And with a second Bright Steel Protector picked up, we are going to be doing a lot of work when it comes to picking apart Thomas's board. All right, two more Merciless Hunters in hand as well, too. And even, you know, Bright Steel Protectors to pair with them, right? So we're going to get Challengers, you know, essentially, thanks to the Vulnerable Tag. And then, you know, theoretically, we throw a Bright Steel Protector onto whatever unit's challenging it, and we can get some uh, pretty good value trades here, depending on what Thomas has in response. So, uh, or we even, you know, utilize something like this Sandstone Charger to pull a unit that's got Vulnerable on it. We could actually, you know, use it to remove something like the Merciless Hunter on the side of the Thomas's board right now. So Shihu's we'll... Shihu's hand is very straightforward. You know, there's no combat tricks, there's no surprises. Now, obviously, Thomas doesn't know that, but I would imagine that Shihu isn't going to be banking too much spell mana. And the one good thing, though, about just having a bunch of merciless hunters and a bunch of bright steel protectors is there's really no combat trick that Thomas is going to play that's going to get through that, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, I got to agree. And there's the barrier, right? So this could be the trade I was just mentioning. Trying to kind of win out on board here. You know, both players' palace is about to count down as well. So this is uh, just looking very, very even. I, I'm trying to think here, too. I mean, in the mirror match, Boulevard, I mean, what what's your read on kind of what you're looking to do here? I mean, is it just as simple as, hey, I have my Sivir out first with Rune Runners uh, and it's leveled up before yours is? Or, I mean, what are we what are we looking to do here? Barrier spells are extremely impactful, and mm -hmm. that's kind of where Bright Steel Protector is going to come in. Now, these decks never really got around to running Repost, but if you play a Sivir and then I Merciless Hunter it and kill it with a Bright Steel Protector, it, does it really matter that you have a Rune Runner down alongside it? Uh, I think what we're going to be looking for mostly is just who can get the leveled Sivir first and get a Rally. Uh, and Thomas is going to have a hard time maintaining a board while doing that. And the life advantage, it doesn't mean nothing, but it doesn't mean a lot. The board advantage is definitely what you want to be holding in a matchup like this. Gives you a much better potential to lethal your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do see a Sivir picked up for Shihu. Yeah, there is the Sivir, so I believe we can get a level. I'm not sure how far she is towards her level up just yet, so we'll see in just a second. And... Um... Robin chat too. I, I think uh, Boulevard. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it is four. Oh, people. if you want me to try and tell you who qualifies, I don't have, I don't have clue, bud. Well, I think it's four people from the winners bracket and two from the losers. If I have that correct, well, there's only five qualifying, so you got that wrong. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking. I think that's Asia SEA. Yeah. It, no, so, that's just AM, just America. America's kind of straightforward. It's four from the winners bracket, two from the losers bracket. But when you get down to five players instead, I think it's um, it's either three from winners and two from losers, or the opposite. Wait, hold on. You just confused the heck out of me. That's literally what I just said. Four. No, it's not. You said four and two. Yeah, that's what you just said for America, right? No, I said three and two. Oh, three and, two, and, and two. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I got you, I got you. It matches with the numbers a lot. It's not just four winners bracket, one losers bracket, I don't think. Yeah, I, I will say we're not 100% sure on that. I do think they published it on the website. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow yeah. as we actually start to qualify players, but nobody mm -hmm. will be solidified today from EU or Southeast Asia Asia. Yeah, I'm trying to... Oh, here we go. All right. So those... every time you say here we go and you just pause like that, I'm scared. Of, I... I'm scared of <laughs> sorry. I sorry. I found the rules. So I just wanted to pull up. The oh, you pulled up the rules. Quick. You're going to read in the middle of that. Uh, no, I'm just I'm going to find it. You, know you can't read. We'll get. Well, I mean, yeah, there's that, I guess. Can't do math either. God, what am I good for? Oh, that's right. Talking. Never mind. So <laughs> who needs to read and write and, and do math when you can just Ooh. talk all day? We got a sivir on both sides. I gotta say, I think at the moment that actually favors Shihu, if we can get it leveled, because yep. we have more Merciless Hunters, we should have a relatively easy time killing this Sivir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry we couldn't be more help, Rob, but the, the format is a little bit uh, hard to explain. Oh, I got it, I got it. Alright, so for America, oh, no. the, upper, try anyway. the upper bracket, well, this is literally from the rules document, sure, so sure. the yeah. upper bracket um, four play. No, so I was right. I was right, and yet you know I hate you sometimes, Boulevard. So upper bracket will be uh four players that qualify. Lower bracket for America will be two players that qualify. Yes, nobody ever questioned that one. It was the five player ones that we were confused. I, I you, hate. Joseph. Please I hate read you. off that section of the rulebook now. I hate you now. so much. <laughs> please so, read off the relevance. I literally said America. Know. Chat, somebody please have my back, please. Yeah, nobody cares about America. Yeah. <laughs> that Tell me how Europeans qualify. Europe is uh, upper bracket is two players. Lower bracket is three players. Okay, so I was right. And Europe and Good Asia, job. Southeast Asia. So. You definitely said for America three and five. You you minced your words, Boulevard. I'm going I back to the I'm going you to the recording. You're hearing. I'm going to the recording. I'm posting this up on Twitter. I'm calling you out. This is happening later. I'm doing it. Yeah, I'll show up at your doorstep. <laughs> what do you live? Four hours from me? That's about enough time between Europe and America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I still be flooded. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, anyways, now that we know who qualifies yeah. by the end of Tom tomorrow, <laughs> kind of going the way of Thomas as we expected for that turn, having the barrier, having the sivered down. Yes, she who got the vulnerable onto it, but that's not something that he can really take advantage of until this turn. And now we have the relic of power. We'll see what comes out mm -hmm. of this. Is it a sandstone charger to take a free challenge onto the sivered? Are we going to do it with our Sivir? Are we going to predict and draw a card? The possibilities are not endless. There's only three possibilities, but we'll see which one it is. All right. Thinking about the Waking Sands, it looks like there's the Relic of Power we were talking about a little bit earlier. And lots of uh, lots of ways to pick off this Sivir. I mean, it, with that Vulnerable Tag, it's probably the, the easiest way we're going to get rid of Sivir on the side of either player. 
you know, being able to pull it with something like a Merciless Hunter. Uh, there could be some buffs like Sharp Sight to go ahead and save her, but we'll see if that's going to be the case here. A third Bright Steel Protector looks pretty, pretty good. good. Mm -hmm. Actually, might go for the Fleet Feather Tracker instead so that we have a kill onto the Merciless Hunter uh, alongside our Sivir. All right, looks like we're really contemplating this. We're just going to skip. skip. All right. Um, I thought those were some nice options, but I guess who really wants a combat trick has had too many units I, in hand for too long is starting to get nervous without a sharp sight or I agree. You know, some equivalent. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I would have taken the, the Bright Seal Protector there, but I will say Preservarium, not terrible. Just, you know, we are relatively even here. Obviously, uh, Thomas uh, ahead on life total, which is pro you know pretty big deal if we get an Overwhelm unit, but the Preservarium will at least allow Shihu to kind of, you know, pull ahead a little bit in card advantage in general, and that might come into play after we're able to deal with this Sivir. So we'll, we'll see what happens here in just a second. Sivir might come down for Shihu as well, and yeah, there it is. It's a big old board. Boulevard. This is going to be rough yeah. for Thomas to deal with here, and, and you hate using these sharp sight spells and things of that nature on the defensive. Um, so they're not even going to be too effective if you throw them out. You'd have to use multiple spells to actually protect the mm -hmm. Sivir from the Sivir. But I would imagine that she who is going to be able to level Sivir this turn. So if mm -hmm. we pull uh, Thomas's Sivir to the end of the line with our Sivir, then you know mm -hmm. it will be up to six attack. It'll take multiple three three whole combat trips. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to take a lot. Or it would take two, rather. I forgot that one puts us at parity and then one more to get over the top. Yeah, two yeah. and the three, same and thing, then, all right. And then you're you, then you're also assuming that she who doesn't have a combat trick to play of their own, right? Because then you could just, you know, you'll buff that up and then now you're back to square one anyways. Now, you do have more cards in hand currently uh, than she who, so you might win out on that war. And actually, there's no man on the side of she who, so there's nothing that could potentially be played right now. But I think that's why we're going with the Sandstone Charger pulling the sivir if you buff it up out of range great i'll take that trade that's two combat tricks down and honestly i think either way that ends for she who i think we're, we're going to be in a pretty good spot and uh oh hey by the way you're also threatening lethal if we don't assign any blockers this is a humongous uh, attack coming through for you oh actually no we're did, too off yeah. all right wow yeah that's kind of the power of having that you much know, health above your opponent. Much <laughs> yeah. He who would uh, be in a much more rough situation, but it looks like we are going to get pretty close to evening up the life totals here if the blocks do go this way. Now, I'm not sure when this Sivir level actually kicks in in the combat train. I think it's after the Bright Steel Protector. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that is just going to be the free kill onto the Rune Runner. Eight damage push through, free kill onto the Sandstone Charger. That was going to die anyway, but, you know, it's still nice to kill it. And as you had mentioned, she who having that preservarium does mean that they are going to have a pretty nice card advantage when all is said and done. Ooh. But here comes Ruin Runner. Yeah. And if one thing we've seen, it's overwhelmed randomly stealing games. So, okay, we got to repost though, but it won't save you from a bunch of pump spells. One might say, Ruin Runner is here, Boulevard. Oh, no. To is it just is ruin it just pump the day? The Ruin Runner with the vulnerable. Yep. <sighs> ruin and Runner coming in clutch. Wow. All right, Thomas taking game one here from Shihu. Ruin Runner ruining Shihu's first game, unfortunately. We'll see if, uh, I imagine Shihu just runs it back here, yep, with the uh, the Akshan Sivir, so we'll get into this game. Into the Nami Zoe. And I see Fizz Poppy down there on the side of Shihu as well, so that's uh, interesting, so we'll hopefully see well, that's that a later. Yeah, so I know, and again, we haven't really seen it. We saw it a lot in Asia SEA. Uh, we haven't really seen it a whole lot today yet. If anything, we've seen Sivir Akshan a ton today, right? This seems to be the most popular deck here, which honestly, much different from what we saw with Asia SCA. So for those of you who weren't here in the beginning, you know, we saw a lot of barrier and we well, saw a lot of plunder. We, let's be realistic, Dozer. We saw three players in Southeast Asia. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think we and, can snap out the metal and, off of the three players we saw go one and two. And both of the, and yeah, I was just going to say, and all those players actually, they're out of the tournament now. So um, that might, you know, it might tell you something. Maybe Barrier is not the we'll way to go. We'll hold off on calling ourselves experts of the Asia Southeast Asia. <laughs> until at least tomorrow. On, at least until tomorrow. Based on the small window that we got to peek into. But yes, um, as far as we know, we currently have no streamers for Southeast Asia Asia tomorrow. So if any of you have friends that are still playing in the World Championship Qualifier, please encourage them yes. to make an account at twitch.tv. It is free. <laughs> or whatever streaming service. Oh, look, if I have to go to a website that I probably shouldn't say, um, I will. I will go there to watch a stream of Legends of Runeterra, mm -hmm. no matter where it is. 
This stream is LimeWire if I have to. This stream is not not sponsored by Twitch. Just want to throw that out there. This is not a sponsored Twitch stream. I'm gonna make a MySpace account. (laughs) Did you just throw out LimeWire and MySpace? Are you older than me now? What the Christ? (laughs) I actually never used those sites, but I'll I'll start for uh, LOR World. So it looks like Thomas actually not going for the uh, sort of patented take the free level up onto Nami on turn four by passing the first few turns and then playing Double Trouble. And actually, I'm not sure how to evaluate these one drops but kai reaper i think is probably not very good and i I, like these look not very good right but they they can Mm -hmm. get some chip damage in i noticed that i believe you're saying actually actually because you're used to saying ah sean i'm saying it with a british accent accent. i'm trying something new it's a character development for me don't call it out just let it happen Uh, oh legend legends of rune terror problems right there (laughs) Oh, man. All right. So we got the Merciless Hunter here. We have, uh, let's see what Thomas is playing off the top to go with this Legion rear guard. It is going to be double, double trouble. trouble again. And Ooh, okay, Otter Puss, nice. Push. That's a good pickup. And actually, uh, nope, this is not the Sivir Auction, so that uh, we will not be playing any barriers that will puff up that Green Glade Caretaker. <laughs> Unless we spell Thief or Repost. <gasps> No, oh, geez, don't don't go there. I'm, don't go it's there. Possible. Don't it's go possible there. Possible to play a barrier spell. Well, well, we wouldn't have enough mana for the repose, right? Not right now. We'd be, <laughs> we'd be one off this turn. I'm not but. saying immediately. I'm saying down the line. <laughs> keep your eye out. And this hand, honestly, not looking great from Shihu. I mean, we kind of got a pillar on this Sivir big time. So we gotta hope that. Tomas doesn't put on enough pressure here to to really. I mean, Tom, Tomas I mean, might be able to to be the aggressor in this matchup, right, and close it out before she she who can get online. Thomas hasn't played a Nami yet. Yeah. So that's like she who's already pretty pretty okay with the spot that they find themselves in. A Shelly here would be a little bit problematic, but it's not really puffing up impactful units. Uh, but I think she who you know has the Cataclysm with the Sivir has the capability to kill a Nami if he sees one. And in the meantime, Sivir should do a pretty good job at picking apart this board of one drops. Now, Nami is leveled now as well. So we might see her come down this turn. Uh, you know, generally speaking, I know players wait to get Nami down until she is actually level two. So let's see if that's the case from Thomas here. Might have one in hand, might not. If we don't, we don't have any elusives and we can't start putting on pressure, that might be a problem for for Thomas now that we do have this Fleet Feather Tracker, like you mentioned. Um, no barriers yet, though. So if we are trading with some units... We're not really going to be able to get those value trades, right? And that, that could be a problem here for Shihu. But we can go ahead, get these attacks through. Thankfully for uh, Shihu here, Merciless Hunter, it's fearsome. There's a three-attack unit, but Legion Rear Guard cannot block. So this is going to be some damage pushed through as well as a free trade with quick attack on the Sivir. And, and more importantly, I mean, this is going to really accelerate Sivir's level up here um, probably about halfway now. So this is big for Shihu here. I'm looking at Shihu's hand, and last game it was all units. This game it's all spells. You you like to get that healthy mix, and I mean that's almost just like the hallmark that we've seen out of Demacia in, in recent memory, right? Like you mm-hmm. think about Chen Fiora and Chen Jarvin, just they always need that perfect mix of spells and units. The mm-hmm. Silver decks were in a similar fashion, but they had a little bit more draw power to fix it out. But Shihu just has been unable to find the, the sort of the perfect hands that you're looking for with a deck like this. And you know Thomas still hasn't played that Nami or that Shelly if they have it. It's mm-hmm. possible that Thomas is actually just sitting on no real threats. In that case, I'm I'm kind of curious as to what Thomas is going for, and it looks like the answer is Sparklefly, unless this is just us Nami. U- utilizing a spell mana before we play Shelly so we get maximum attune value. Yep, or Nami for that matter. Which that's going to that's going to be great if that's the case for Thomas here. Really well, milking it too. Down, she dies instantly to concerted strike. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Or or even Cataclysm. Again, Plus a combat trick if we need to. So much removal in this deck. It's crazy. Cataclysm. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Cataclysm be a difference maker in a lot of different matchups. Especially one like this where you want to pick off a back row unit like Nami. You know, Cataclysm just provides so much utility. And here we have Crescendum, actually. I'm going to go ahead and get played. And we got a Sparkle Fly. So it looks like, for me anyways... This communicates Thomas is not doesn't have Shelly, doesn't have Nami, like you were mentioning in Boulevard, and is saying, okay, we might have to go kind of this this long game route. We might have to get some lifesteal on to, to wait things out a little bit. 
you know, sustain until what? a little bit later in the game and eventually what get Nami down and go wide. What are you playing with a sparkle fly did... and no Nami and no Shelly? That's a 1-2 sparkle fly. That's my point. a 1-2 sparkle fly. You don't want to play, but, but we need to survive. This is the sustain we need, yeah, right? Yeah, we don't I'm want saying, that to happen. But I'm that saying might this be the doesn't gotta go. do that. You don't play a long game with a 1-2 sparkle fly. You die. <laughs> this this is a nothing play. This is not hanging on and trying to grind out the late game. This is nothing. So We've done nothing. We could, I mean, we could have something, and we actually just wanted the sparkle fly to start buffing it up. I mean, maybe we're prepping our board a little bit here. But I mean, we, we have to be. see. We have to see something. We have to see Shelly. We have to see Nami. Because right I now mean, this is not looking good. So take take a step back, right? It's possible that Thomas just doesn't have anything and is in the losing scenario and is just doing what oh, they can. Yeah, Burble yeah. Fish is kind of indicative of that i feel like if we had a shelly it would have been played by now yeah yeah what do we got there okay of wow course, comes nami but we do have an auto kill with either cataclysm or concerted strike now the question is do we have some sort of save for it um the problem well, is even if we had even... even if we buffed it we have sharp sight right so we yeah. can add plus two plus two um so I think this is a dead Nami pretty much no matter what, which is really unfortunate for yeah. Thomas here. It, now it's a matter of how many spells can we fire off in the meantime. Unfortunately, yeah. that Green Glade Caretaker is going to take a buff before the Sparkle Fly because it is a one-mana unit instead mm -hmm. of a two-mana unit. Uh, but Zoe goes first. Actually, how much did the Burble Fish cost? Two. Okay. Yeah, this is... This is rough. And Not I that have it matters a... because you go attack, then health, but... I have a feeling, too, that... Um, like, Burblefish probably grab, like, a slow spell or something like that, right? So, or just something that's probably... Well, I don't know. I mean, it can grab a one-cost burst spell. It grabs Jettison a lot. Yeah, but the... Yeah, see, and actually, we didn't get anything played yet from Thomas, so... Yeah. We might have nothing to play as well. That's... All I right, mean, here we go. Even if we do... All right. Okay, I like this because this is actually going to make Sparklefly the target for Nami after Zoe because yep. now it's got the two attack. That's really nice mm -hmm. for Thomas, but... We've only got the two mana left. We could star chart the sparkle fly up to a three three, and that mm -hmm. actually does kind of help us play a long game a little oh, bit better. Yep. Spell, thief. spell thief even. What has she who played? It only looks like one. it's just cataclysm. Yeah. <laughs> she who just pulled it up there on the right two to Messenger double check. Sigil. Wow. All right, that's okay. A spell from Burblefish. Wow. Okay. So it was a one mana burst speed spell. We're getting a lot of buffs across the board here. So this is going to be a fair amount of damage coming through. Not to mention the three life steal from this sparkle fly so yeah, what is that 10 damage with thomas being totally tapped out she who is safe to just sharp sight, sharp sight. the sivir and block the sparkle fly yeah we've talked about this time and time again this 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 whole sharp sight card boulevard it's it's yeah. a thing it's been around for we, a while we have sharp sight we have concerted strike the sparkle yeah. fly it, it's just a matter of do we want it to actually gain a little bit of life i like using the sharp sight um mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the Concerted Strike can be held back for a Nami again a little bit later on. Your unit is still going to survive. The fact that it is damaged means very little in this matchup, especially since you still have the Spell Shield. But we're going to actually take the block onto the Zoe. Interesting. Okay. So not really concerned about this Sparkle Fly right now. Not concerned about that long game I mentioned. <laughs> it's so... Why is it that every time you say something stupid, I have to entertain hey, it? Because that is <laughs> not that stupid, okay? Thomas needs sustain to get another Nami or a Shelly now. So if we can keep yes. the Sparkle Fly around, if we can keep this Sparkle Fly on board and continue to live, then that's what's going to give us more chances to live right now. Because eventually Shihu is going to run out of options to deal with and remove these elusives. It's just a matter of when that happens and if it's before or after we actually get Nami or Shelly, right? So we'll see how long the Sparkle Fly actually lives. Yeah, it might need to be the target of a Cataclysm or a Concerted mm -hmm. Strike in its own right relatively soon. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Shihu actually open with the Cataclysm from the Sivir onto the Sparkle Fly. It would take a couple of buffs to get it out of the range of, you know, dying to the Sivir. And we still have the shapestone in hand i don't know why i blanked on that one so hard still have the shapestone in hand in case there is like specifically a pale cascade and a sun blessed vigor i wonder if we got the spell nope okay we got crush and strike here so this actually shuts down the sandstone charger however we can still use it for something like concerted strike so we'll see if that does end up removing the sparkle fly like you mentioned we do have the cataclysm as well which was pranked so this is going to be a, a little bit of a hefty cost on the cataclysm one but there at two mana i don't think there's anything thomas can do to save this sparkle fly 
Now, this is actually good for Shihu, right? You like to be able to use these prank cards in situations like this where you kind of have that extra wiggle room for mana and you don't feel too bad about using the extra mana because you're still going into next turn with the three spell mana banked as well as being up in tempo and up in mana on your opponent. So I, I think that was great timing on that Cataclysm on the side of Shihu. And now, I mean, this is where Shihu just turns on the jets. Sparklefly's gone. Is he going to do it? Is he going to play the Ricochet? Try to take the kill onto the Burblefish? Do it. You won't. You won't, Shihu. Do it. He's, he's considering yeah. it. Yeah. It looks like he's going to go. Yeah, he slams it. All right. Let's go. Yeah, I can't be hovered here. We don't know what's lining up yet. And we'll see how it works out. And that is going to be the kill onto the nice. Burblefish. Nice. All right. Ooh, Messenger. So somebody in chat, I think I saw as well, Hilo, you know, mentioned Messenger Sigil actually isn't too bad for this deck. I mean, if we do start to chain together some of these Messengers, that actually, you know, it's kind of an alternate way outside of Sparklefly to, you know, make it into some more turns to actually start to draw things like Shelly and Nami. It doesn't only just draw you a card to get you closer to that, but it also provides that chump blocker 2-2 unit on board. And yeah, here we go. It's, it allows us to continue to go wide, get more units, get the Nami down. Problem is, Shu's got another Concerted Strike, and I don't know if Thomas has any way of saving Nami with only three mana left and the Concerted Strike coming out. Yeah, it looks like Shihu's kind of debating, do we vulnerable the Nami and Concerted Strike the Zap Spray Fin so that we don't take any damage this turn? If Nami does fire off a bunch of spells next turn, then we only have to worry about the Messenger. The concern with that play is if a Burble Fish comes down, and Nami gets to buff up a Burblefish that pokes you a little bit because Nami's ebb can kill you, right? You know, it, it yeah. comes out, it could deal two to the Nexus, it could deal an additional two with the ebb and flow, so you don't really want to be taking too much damage here on the 9 HP. And it looks like Shihu is suffering a little bit from decision overload and looks like they will go for the vulnerable onto the Nami. Now we'll see how All many right. spells come out to buff up this... Uh... Well, first it's going to buff up Messenger. And then it's going to buff up Zap. So the fact, like, Zap is not likely to become a four attack unit this turn. No. No, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, this is still, I mean, this is still looking okay for Thomas. I mean, I, I know it seems bad because, again, Nami most likely going to die if not this turn, the next turn. But we are going to get the Cataclysm. And now, after using the Vulnerable, Ooh. getting the Concerted Strike okay all right so nami is gonna go bye bye gonna prevent yeah, we are gonna lose our the buff well i was gonna say we're gonna lose our merciless hunter and take a little bit of damage here and yep. she who is she who playing a landmark all right we have lethal on the open attack if we wanted to with shapestone but we are gonna develop auction well i don't think we do i don't think he's played a landmark yet you think this is the first actually yeah i mean that's hmm I'm sorry. Oh, Preservary. No. Dude, was Preservary in this game? I don't think so. So, no, I think you might be right. I think there might might not have been any landmarks played. Let's see what Spell Thief grabs this time around. A few more options. We're checking yeah, here on the side of Shihu. Yeah, Concerted Strike is suddenly open. But now mm -hmm. everything's going to get Spell Shield with the Sivir, so it's not Concerted Strike. Yeah, this yeah. is lethal. Yes, this is presenting lethal. We'll see what Thomas stole with that Spell Thief. It is not Pale Cascade. That's a main deck card. We'll see what we can draw here. And it looks like it was a whole That's lot of nothing. lethal. And Shihu going to tie it up here, bringing it to a game number three with Thomas. And again, this is currently the third round here in the winner's bracket. So as we wait to queue into the second game real quick. We do have Grand Rodeo as 3-0 undefeated right now into the fourth round. The winner of this game is going to take on the winner of Spikes and Game Breaker, which is pretty crazy. Oh, boy. And we got Bandle Tree up against Zoe Nami. And this, right. this Boulevard is a matchup we expected to see, right? This yes. is a matchup and we now, expected to see. I actually, I wasn't sure what was going to be like the go-to ban of the tournament, right? We really still, I think, haven't seen any Draven Scion. And yeah. I, I kind of thought that Nami Zoe might be the band that players are looking to get, but it does kind of have this exploitable early game because of the way that it wants to play the double trouble mm -hmm. and level up the Nami early on. And we're just going to group shot a Zoe because why not? You see Zoe, you kill Zoe. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And I'm keeping track of the Bandle tree. I think it's at zero. I got that right. All right, is it one? <laughs> I'm on top of it. 
Bandle Commando, baby. I love saying that card name, too, because it kind of rhymes a little bit. But Bandle Commando. I'm so glad you haven't had a chance to say daddy yet. In the <laughs> at large no today. Jarvan. No, no barrier today. We've actually seen quite a few Jarvan decks. They just weren't playing Jarvan the Third. Nope. No Jarvan's daddy. There he goes. J just remember, you, you gave me the excuse forever. to say that. So, <laughs> Hungry Owlcat, though, already getting developed here. Ooh. Thanks to Bandle Commando. Some bad one drops. Yeah, those are pretty bad. Wow. Oh, jeez. Man, why couldn't the Wings in the Wave be the base 3-3 three, three, and then you can play it as an 0-1 that makes this, a prey? This She Who's Hand, on the other hand, is looking fantastic. We have plenty of units to go wide, and we also can throw down a Poppy if we want. Now, we can't throw down a Poppy into an open attack on turn uh, on turn 5, which is, you know... A lot of times that's going to be where you're able to sneak in one of those attacks with Poppy real quick, but uh, we could develop her. On four? No, I mean, we could develop her. The problem is if it actually gets removed, right? So, By what? On the side of Thomas? Actually, good question. I mean, I don't have the deck list up, but I mean, being in Bilgewater Targon, there's probably not a whole lot of great options to remove the Poppy, I so maybe maybe she would just slams it. To, you would have to line them up, make it rain, and put the line them up on the stack as well, and both of them would have to hit Poppy. Or technically... Uh, and the scary part is, if you hit Fizz with make it rain, the entire spell just gets negated. Mini, mini more. Technically. There's... Uh, <laughs> there I don't is... think these decks play mini more. That is I quite expensive. Yeah, I don't think so either, but, you know, that is an option. We're on six mana. So we'll see if Thomas has I, an answer I would be here. so surprised if a mini morph comes out onto this Poppy right now. I would too, I'm not going to lie. But if nothing comes out on this Poppy, that is a huge advantage for Shihu here, right? I mean, this is four units wide. Everything's going to be getting buffed here. We're even going to get a buffed up Fizz. We could utilize the group shot to elusive the Fizz, but uh, we might actually probably hold that back. I imagine Fizz won't be attacking this turn. All right, double trouble going to be the play. That definitely does not remove Poppy, Ooh. but that's a huge blocker. Oh, wow. Yeah, Shadow Fiend really oh, going to dissuade this Oh, my God. Attack. <laughs> the thumbs Yo, up emote. Hold up. Wait, get a thumbs yeah, up hold logo? on. Wait, well, back up. Where did that emote come from? Was That's that in toxic. the new set? Was that the new set? <laughs> it's world's client only. You get the little thumbs up. Wow, that Man. completely shuts it down. the only one drop in the game that is mm -hmm. going to make you not want to attack with Poppy Thomas. Starting off strong here in game number three after a pretty weak first hit off the double trouble. You are going to lose the unit, but I mean, like, Krusty Codger is the other high rollest one drop you could get, mm -hmm. right? In terms of, uh, you know, just having a one drop stat wise, I think the actual yeah. high roll would be the 1 1 elusive in Ionia. And I think overall, I mean, listen, that definitely is a worst case scenario for Shihu there, but we still got Bandle Commando connecting. Like you mentioned, Shadow yeah. Fiend does die at the end of the turn. So overall, that was still a very positive trade and, and you know, put Shihu a little bit ahead here. Um, because eventually we're going to be able to attack with Poppy again, right? We're still back to square one and Thomas where we don't necessarily have the greatest ways to deal with Poppy right now. So next turn, we're just in turn six waiting room right now yeah. to develop more and attack once again. I mean, that's kind of the exploitation of Nami Zoe is the deck doesn't play any removal. It, it's a very combo centric deck that really just wants to get Nami and these elusives out and play a bunch of cheap spells and the deck building restrictions around something like that don't really allow you to play like monster harpoon. Oh, Pilchenstein in chat said thumbs up is from the co-op lab. Which makes sense because I've never really played the co-op lab, so. Yeah, we hate each other, so we don't play co-op labs together. <laughs> All right, here's the Nami level up animation coming in hot. We'll see All how right. much you can get done. Yeah, first it's going to hit Wings on the Wave, then Exalted Poro, but now Exalted Poro is going to flip. So similarly, I mean, at least right now in the hand of Shiu, we don't really have any great ways to deal with the Nami either. So Nami is going to stick around a little bit. However, no elusive units, and we're still chilling with these kind of useless one drops here that we have on field. However, buffed up, they will not be useless. It's just going to take a little while. It's going to take a few spells, Boulevard, before these this exalted Poro and the Wings in the Wave actually become relevant here as blockers. Poor, okay, going to grab a Trickster, try to oh, play trickster. the elusive okay. game against Thomas who still doesn't have any elusives, does have the crescendum though, so could get a sparkle fly here. Listen, elusive, any elusive blocker in this matchup, I've actually seen this time and time again now versus this Nami matchup with any deck. If if you're you're able to grab something like Trickster, when I say any deck, it's really, you know, any deck that can grab and have access to something like the Trickster, um, like a, a discover like effect or manifest effect, um, this is a great pickup because your opponent is never really expecting you to have an elusive unit. And 
you know, now, have or not necessarily no elusive unit, period, but having a 3-3 blocker specifically is going to be huge um, outside of this Bandle Commando that we see on field, right? And here we go. We're already throwing on the Trickster. This is a great blocker for the Zoe, great blocker really for any elusive unit that comes down early here. And, man, Bandle Commando, I got to say, when Bandle Commando first came out too, I don't think too many people were high on the card. I know I wasn't incredible, incredibly high on the card. Like, it's like, ah, okay, this is a nice, neat, new Yordle uh, here. But it puts in so much work in this deck. The, effect, the fact that it grabs an additional one drop and in a meta where we do have decks like Nami that have so many elusive units, having that additional elusive blocker is super, super crucial in a matchup like this. Yeah, I don't. I think it was kind of overlooked because who tried to brew Bandle Tree before we had all the cards? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think anyone was like super invested in. Uh, Probably Nick. Make Nick makes plays. On day right? zero. <laughs> Throw out a deck with like three cards revealed. This is my brew. We're good. I, I never got into that whole meta of like, yeah. yeah, we've seen two cards here. I built a deck with it. This is absolutely useless information that will never make it to life. Yep. But pe people eat it up, man. But now, Zoe's group shottable for the time being um if there are two one mana spells in thomas's hand then it won't work and actually elects to just take a pass and see what the exalted poro rolls and it looks like we got is that fearsome overwhelmed fearsome <laughs> oh boy those are not the best better than like regen i guess overwhelm is pretty bad yeah quick attack's not bad fearsome, fearsome is meh Fearsome's okay. I don't think uh, Fearsome's ever going to come into play. Copy attack, but, yeah. <laughs> um, it looks like Nami should have no trouble getting, a, you know, something into the range of being able to clear out a decent amount of this board. All right, line them up. We got one spell. Starting to get some of these buffs going here. Yep. Zoe up to a 3-2. Next comes Exalted Poro's turn. See what we and we're pretty far away from the Bandle Tree win con from what it's worth. We're only at 5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as long as we can deal, if we can deal with the Trickster and the Bandle Commando, you know, Thomas will be in a pretty good spot. It looks like we are able to block the Bandle Commando. This is going to put Zoe within Pokey Stick range. Potentially. Um, which is which is going to be an issue. But, I mean, besides Pokey Stick, I mean, we have Group Shot. So, in all reality, we do have the ability to kind of remove whatever we want. But, yep, here's the Pokey Stick. Such a good two-mana addition to the, uh, the Bandle City card pool here. We got a Ravenous Ooh, we Flock. Pick up the flock. Okay. Flock is... Not great right now. Not... <laughs> well, I mean, you can you can try and kill the Nami with it. There is the possibility of Guiding Touch. But because mm -hmm. you have Group Shot and Pokey Stick, you can re-damage the Nami to try and guarantee the kill onto it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of resources expended. Thomas... Could just have another Nami. Might even just have a way to save it anyway through uh, a Sunblessed Vigor or something like that. So now with the Elusive down, with less mana on the side of Thomas, I, I think if you want to remove that Nami, now is the time to do it. And with four mana, she who still has all of the tools available. Hovering Group Shot, Hovering Pokey Stick. Not sure what we want to do here. Could also summon a unit. I mean, honestly, I feel like any line of play here is is good. Um, possibly getting this randomly generated landmark out of Bomber Twins might make sense. First, you know, rule of thumb, most card games, you want to get those uh, those generated cards or those draws first, just kind of see what you're working with here. And looks like that is going to be Bomber Twins. We'll see what we get. And yeah. it, Oh, okay. That's, that's okay. not terrible. That's a unit. It's not Starspring. Yeah, Hibernating Rock Bear. That's, that's pretty decent. So I imagine we're both going to be banking mana going into the next turn. Now, we could get Knock Him Down here to utilize this keg. Um, and if Knock Down gets played, I think she who is able to just kill the Nami with Group Shot and Ravenous Flock. Yeah. Wow, what a what a one two punch there! Two mana to to activate you know that flock and and fo deal four damage is pretty insane. Yep. Group Shot is such who, a good card. She who's not hanging on to cards super well though. We don't really have any of the draw cards that we normally see. Uh, we have yet to find any hidden pathways. We have yet to find the Bandle Tree. Uh, we are at 6 out of 10 now that we've played our Sharima unit. We're still missing Noxus and Shadow Isle, so we can actually get up to 8 pretty quickly if we can find a House Spider. Really debating that knock him down. It looks like we're just not going to use it. And she who thinking about trying to take a kill onto the Sparkle Fly. Yeah, Thomas, I think pretty smart to keep that 2 mana open. You know, 
represent some uh, some protection there from any of these units. But we do get the group shot actually used on the Sparkle Fly. Nothing flyer. out of Thomas. Yeah. Could still be saving it, though, to make sure we protect the Nami. There is that, right? Yeah. Really curious as to what Thomas's hand is at this point. And maybe now we get to see the knock him down? I mean, I feel like it's pretty safe to play it now, right? It's a, I think it's a matter of like, do you just like, do you want to spend the mana on the knock him down? You mm -hmm. could kill the three two. You could, tr you could potentially take a fill on a uh, kill onto the fizz rather, but we're just gonna bank the mana. Ooh, house spider that puts us at eight. All right, there's another elusive unit coming down. Pokey stick. All right, so it looks like we are gonna go. This is looking like pokey stick flock, I imagine. And again, you know, technically, if we have some protection, that will do it. Uh, but I think, you know, Shihu probably thinking, all right, the protection didn't come out last turn. Probably a good chance that we don't have it. This does give the opportunity, though, if Ravenous Flock does come out, for uh, Thomas to actually use some spells in response. And actually doesn't play it right off the cut. So if we do have any slow speed spells or something that were created a couple turns ago, we could get those out here. Could summon some additional elusive units as well. Really crucial for Shihu to have the removal here to remove something like Nami. This is uh, this is going to be... Yeah, and there's the slow speed crescendum. See, yep, it is going to be Sparkle Fly, and it is going to be the buff. Again, both of these elusive units, though, Boulevard, they, oh my, they're completely shutting down so much here on the side of Thomas. I mean, this 4-4 Trickster is... Might as well be a 10-10 at this point, because uh, Nami just not quite able to get these units above what they need to be to, to actually go in for an attack and be safe here. You say some of the wildest hyperbolic things sometimes, and I love it. Um, <laughs> it's, well, it's true, okay. all right? <laughs> There's the messenger sigil, which means now you are safe to take the kill onto the Nami. Yep, there we go. Don't have the mana for the protection. Not going to be able to save it. Down goes Nami. And now I think she was in a pretty good spot here. Because, again, both of these elusive units do trade with the elusives on the board of Thomas, so we can't really safely go in for an attack. And there we go, yeah. Shihu back over, and Poppy Ooh. off the top is huge. I... Wow. Poppy's a little awkward here, because you want those units, or you want those cards off start to peak. It looks like we're just going to overwrite the Hungry Owl Cat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, getting the uh, Trickster up to a 5-5 five five is Super huge. important, yeah. All right, there comes the Messenger from the Messenger Sigil. Uh, Messenger Sigil actually looks to be the one drop from Burblefish of the day today rather than, uh, you know, sort of the the jettison that a lot of us ladder players have to deal with when playing the deck. Okay, wait. What are we waiting for? I was going to say, all right, originally she who was sending Fizz in for the attack, but then took it back. Um, but okay, no, I guess this makes sense because you want to protect the Trickster to potentially go in again and, and well, get saved. You didn't have to attack with Trickster. Poppy will buff everything regardless. Yeah. I am a little surprised that we're pushing Trickster into the range of now trading onto the Sparkle Fly rather than yeah. just jump blocking it. Yeah, this attack. Uh, but I guess you're kind of expecting on. Shelly to put everything out of the range of that anyway, and mm -hmm. we do have yet another elusive blocker. Things looking okay for Shihu, but Thomas is definitely not out of the game by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and you know, now that I'm starting to see this matchup play out a little another bit Trickster. more. Oh, in a mini in morph up the top. Okay, now things are looking yeah. pretty good for Shihu. I, you know, so like I was saying, now that I see this matchup play more and more, this Bandle City deck, it just seems so, or the Bandle Tree deck, I should say, it seems like it has so many answers to everything that this Nami deck wants to put down. Namely, that there's a lot of elusive blockers that stuff most of the incoming damage throughout the game. And you can see here, Shihu's still at 20. There's been no aggression put on from from Thomas and Thomas is at five and that's not even really how this deck primarily wants to win on the side of Shihu. We want to win with Bandle Tree. We're winning through damage. Yeah, and we might actually have a really good shot at winning through damage relatively soon once we get the mini morph down onto the Sparkle Fly. Mm -hmm. Things starting to look better and better for Shihu here. And here's the Looking level to take of down the former seasonal champion Thomas. Yeah, the mini morph, if I'm correct, yeah, is gonna actually put the uh the disparity of elusives on the side of Shihu. But okay, the fourth elusive okay. means it will still be equal here. And we'll see how much But I think equals kind of a misleading word because Thomas isn't attacking with the Shelly, right? Mm -hmm. So we almost don't want to count that one. 
That is a good point, yeah. Well, I just mean, I'm thinking about she who's attack turn, right? You know, how many blockers yeah. is Thomas going to have? And I feel like if she who attacks and Thomas blocks with Shelly, that's, that's almost a game over. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Shelly pretty much just as important as Nami. Definitely a unit Ooh, that you here want we to go. protect Some here. Figure. Finally, we've been playing around it all game. But yeah. We finally see it come out. And now we actually have one more elusive unit. So this that's very, very important here. So that, Ooh, that here does... we go. Hidden Pathways oh. is huge. She who really needs the refuel. Buster shot. That's big. That's and big. And House Fighter going to put us at 8 out of 10. Still missing. Freljord and Piltover and Zon. Yeah, this will just straight up take down Shelly if there's no protection. We did just see Sunblast Vigor come out. So it's, you know, a little less likely and we see it in the hand. Even... I was going to say, even is. if you force Thomas to use a spell this turn, that's still huge because it means mm -hmm. he can't play two spells on the next turn in order to get the Shelly activation. Man, this is coming down to basically a top deck war here. We just got a pretty wide feel on both sides. Guiding Touch, not a bad pickup. You know, kind of getting these uh, these messages online. All right, we keep okay. top decking more draw. This is big. <laughs> yeah, but she who goes in yeah. again with the poppy and continues to grow the board. This is what Thomas is supposed to be doing here. Mm -hmm. And she who is doing it better... Jay does we might actually get to see Poppy level. We talked about it earlier in the day. <laughs> we didn't see it before, you know, we yeah. We haven't seen a Poppy level up <laughs> animation. This is the second attack. Uh, we'll see how it goes on the next one, because the next time around it might be lethal. You know, giving plus two, plus two, and impact over to every unit. We're still not trading with the Poppy to kill the Poppy, which is an issue. Um, yeah, so Poppy's going to live. The Trickster is going to live. We get the Rock Bear down. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but it's there. You know, he, he's playing the he's game. chilling. She's chilling. He's having a good time. For another okay, Shelly. Which is, at this point in the game, useless. Shelly ain't it. Yeah. You know, Shelly's good when you have a lot of cards in hand, a lot of spells to play. We ain't got that. All right, we you do know. have a spell thief to play Ooh. two spells. That's big. Hidden pathway could be big. Yup. Let's see what we got. I think that would have been an insta, insta pick here, possibly. I think it might be five mana still. I think this will actually be the first. No, because you, you definitely created two line ups yeah. and oh, knock yeah. them down. So, yeah, mm -hmm. hidden pathways would be three mana. And she who actually just abandoning the Bandle Tree Wincon going for another uh oh no, actually that's built over and on unit. I thought it was mm -hmm. Freljord or Ionia for some reason. But yeah, we're actually nine out of ten on the Bandle Tree as well. Not that it matters. It looks like the impact four is going to end the game here for She Who on the next attack turn. We but got? we should still get the Poppy level up. There's the mini morph from elusive. And you know, that might have caught might have been it if we were able to push some more damage throughout the Promise. first half of the game. But... Surrender. I want to see Poppy level. Yes. Let's see and it. There's the 10th region. Let's see it. We Here we go, yes. baby. This is literally the first time I've seen Poppy level. All right. It's pretty cute, right? I yeah, like it's it. all right. All right. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. I'm liking that thumbs up and stuff, by the way. But it looks like <laughs> she who, and there's a point. There's a pointed finger. She who. Yeah. Got to give the Shenny mode as well. Taking it over Thomas here. In overtime, that game went quite long. And Shihu going to advance. That means Shihu is going to be playing Game Breaker Boulevard.